In the previous section, we learned how to create the front end of our application. In this section, you will learn the main differences between WebSocket or AJAX channels and WebRTC channels. To understand and discover the main features and differences between these technologies, our expertise on JavaScript and server-side development will come in handy here. As we are aware, dynamic web pages need to update content automatically without reloading web pages. So, the AJAX methodology was introduced to exchange data with a server to upload parts of a web page without reloading the whole page. This kind of updates will make the app faster and more responsive. Also, if the XML word is part of the AJAX acronym, the JSON container is more often used as data container. The XML HTTP request method is the main method used for placing HTTP requests. These requests could be synchronous or asynchronous. Of course, asynchronous requests require backend functions. WebSockets technology was introduced to create real, full duplex channels between a client and a server. It's because of this new technology that the client can place asynchronous requests to a server and wait for its answer through backend functions. However, as we already anticipated, the connection is fully duplex because the server on its own could contact directly the client through this kind of socket. This technology consists of a WebSocket object created and used for placing HTTP requests. The most commonly used data container is JSON, like the AJAX technology, which is used for exchanging messages and data. So what about connecting two clients through the Just Scene technologies? As we can see from the example diagrams, both technologies require a centralized server that receives messages or data from a client and forwards that data to the other client. Let's analyze what is a WebRTC data channel. It's a WebRTC-based technology for high-performance and low-latency peer-to-peer connections between two clients. The data could be shared as blobs or array buffers. Even if the initialization is more complex than other technologies and not well supported at all from every web browser, it's the most convenient way if you're already using WebRTC application. So why use WebRTC data channels instead of WebSockets or AJAX requests? First of all, AJAX requests are not fully duplex. This means that if the server wants to send messages to the client, it can't like this. It has to wait for the client to pull it again, requesting something. We've seen a similar scenario for the previous web application we developed. As you may remember, the client could communicate with the server through HTTP POST requests sent with AJAX, the server could send back new messages to the client only thanks to the Google App Engine channel. Regarding WebSockets, they have to pass through a centralized web server anyway. In this case, we might have bottleneck and privacy problems to handle properly. So, WebRTC data channels are the only way to gain real peer-to-peer -peer connection between two peers obtaining full bandwidth usage. The server, in this case, as you can also see from the slides diagram, will handle only signal forwarding between the two peers, and these signaling messages are usually lighter than the real data that will be transmitted through WebRTC data channels. Finally, we can achieve a safe and private communication thanks to SSL and peer-to-peer -peer features of the WebRTC communications. OK, that's all for now. In the next video, we'll see how to properly create and use a WebRTC data channel.